symbol of society. You know, people say that money can't buy happiness, but it sure can get you quite far in life. So obviously money's been around for a very long time. It's been our form of currency. This is what gives objects value. Now money, of course, comes in many different forms. We generally attribute physical money forms to dollar bills and coins. Now, depending on which country you're in, to what that would look like. But we also pay with credit and debit cards, or even some people can pay with their phones. So the forms of currency have continued to change throughout the years. In a world that's becoming more digital every day that passes, why don't we have a new form of currency to fit that? A completely digital currency. Cryptocurrency. Now cryptocurrency, as I just said, is an entirely digital currency. That means you're never going to physically be able to hold it. You're never going to physically be able to see it. However, it does exist and it does have value as long as we allow it to have value. It's entirely on the internet and still, even so, it holds the same value as a, say, a dollar bill would. So one of the main questions that people have or concerns when it comes to cryptocurrency is its safety factor. Now, obviously, it's all online. It doesn't seem like, you know, this isn't going to be an Ocean's Eleven situation where you got to break into this highly secure bank vault in a casino to get millions of dollars. It doesn't seem like the same thing. The money's entirely online. In many ways, that is true, but cryptocurrency companies have ways to stop this from happening. The main safety measure is called blockchain. Now blockchain is a self-run system that records digital assets. It creates unalterable chains that show how crypto is distributed. Now what this basically means is it allows people to monitor the distribution of crypto and that keeps fraud down, keeps people from copying their crypto and, and things like that. Now blockchain is very effective at what it does and it's still in some of its first forms. That doesn't mean that there aren't hacking and scams and that and other illegal actions. Now hacking is sometimes a problem. Blockchain does its best to stop that, but it's not always going to have a 100% result. And uh, we know that cryptocurrency is still a relatively new product. So it isn't surprising that there would be problems. Of course, with every new product, uh, you're going to run into issues. It's just a matter of whether you can deal with these issues or not. And crypto has shown that they can improve upon themselves already and, of course, can always continue to improve. And so hacking, yes, it might be a bit of a problem, but even so, it doesn't happen like every day. And blockchain and other safety measures are in place to stop that uh, largely from happening, and it will only get better from there. So let's talk now about some of the advantages and disadvantages of cryptocurrency. So first, the advantages. Well, the main advantage is called decentralization. Now, decentralization is basically it means that it's not run by the government, it's not controlled by the government, it has no ties to the government. Now, cryptocurrency has a decentralized system, which means it's not going to be controlled by a bank government, it's entirely yours. Now, this is a major deal because, um, mainly because of the no single failure system. Now, if you think about it, if there's a large bank, and a lot of people have money in this bank, and then this bank shuts down, well, then those people's money might be in jeopardy, and that's a lot of failure right there. But with cryptocurrency, there never is that one single point of failure. Your money is your money. Right? And there's nothing that's going to, if a company goes down, that money is still going to be your money. Now this also allows for faster and more efficient ways to transfer money across the border or just um, to another party. Right? Because there's going to be no third parties at any point. You're not going to need a bank there to transfer money. You're not going to need uh, the government or anyone watching. It's just between you and the other party. Now this allows for it to be so much more efficient. But of course, the more obvious advantage would be that we're using less natural resources. Since it's all digital, we're not using like paper to print money or anything like that. We're not going to need to make coins as much, print money, use power to charge those 
uh, printing uh, things. It's obviously going to use less natural resources if we move over into a digital infinite kind of source of currency. But let's take a look at some of the disadvantages. Now, I was just talking about power usage and how that would decrease uh, because of natural resources, but uh, there's also something called mining. Now, mining is used by all the major cryptocurrency companies like Bitcoin. Now, mining is basically when computers scratch and place codes that will then authenticize transactions of cryptocurrency. Now, this uses quite a bit of power, a great amount of power to do this. It's been compared before to all U.S. residential lighting across the country. So obviously this is a bit of a problem. Now it doesn't mean that it can't be improved. That's a very important subject. Uh, cryptocurrency is still a very, new, well it's a relatively new product, right? Of course there are going to be problems, but that doesn't mean that they can't be improved upon. Cryptocurrency is still being learned about, it's still being understood, and as it is, it will ultimately continue certainly to improve upon itself, and the power usage will likely go down with that. Now we also have already talked about hacking and scams and how it's a problem. Other legal actions like money laundering has also showed up on crypto. But again, this is something that can be improved upon. Now it's not like this is that big of a deal right now anyway. It's not like this is happening day in and day out people are hacking crypto. It just, it does exist. But at the same time, if you have a credit card, right, that number can be stolen and people can get money from that, right? So it's not as if all forms of currency are safe anyway, it's just that crypto may have a little bit more of a problem due to it being entirely online and due to it being new. But it will certainly be able to build itself up as time passes and as they learn how hackers are getting it, how illegal actions are being taken, and they can uh, fix it up from there. Now, of course, you also have investing. And this may be a disadvantage, this may be an advantage, depending on how you look at it. But basically, investing in cryptocurrency is extremely, extremely risky. Now, what this means is that it's never at a steady rate. It's always up and down. It's never gonna stay at $100. So maybe 25 the next day, and then 200 the next day, right? Something like that. And this has caused, because it's never been steady since it's creation, this has caused many people to think of this as little less than a fact. If it can't stay steady now, what's going to keep it steady in the future? And it is true, but of course, as more people begin to accept cryptocurrency, as its safety gets better, and as we give it more value, it's going to become more and more steady, or so it's likely to. Now we've talked here about just an introduction to crypto and its safety, its advantages, its disadvantages. Of course, this is a very simple overview of crypto. It's a very complex topic, but I think if there's anything you all should take home today, it's that in a world moving towards digitalization, crypto looks a lot more like the future than a dollar bill or a coin does. Thank you.